A council in London will today consider the next step in the launching of a special order to stop anti-abortion protesters holding daily vigils outside a Mary Stopes clinic. The demonstrators are accused of harassing women attending the anti-abortion cl the abortion clinic in Ealing and displaying deliberately disturbing images. Councillors will decide whether to begin a consultation on whether or not to bring in what's called a public space protection order to prevent disruption outside. If it's granted, it will be the first time it's been used in a situation involving an abortion clinic. We're going to speak now to John Hansen Brevetti, who is a nurse and manager at the Ealing Mary Stopes Clinic, to Councillor Binder Rye, who represents the area where the clinic is and brought this issue to the attention of Ealing Council, and Claire McCullough, founding trustee of the Good Council Network, which is a group which holds daily vigils outside the clinic. It's an organisation affiliated to the US anti-abortion movement. Uh, thank you for talking to us. Uh, John Hansen Brevetti, you've worked at the clinic in Ealing for two years. Tell us how those vigils have changed over that time. We've, we've seen the, the tactics used outside our doors get worse. Uh, staff who've been at the clinic for upwards of 20 years can describe a time when it was just peaceful prayer happening outside, which people still found intimidating, but it's different to what we see today, which is people standing directly outside our gates, um, engaging everyone who comes past, uh, trying to persuade them not to attend their treatment. And they do this by calling them mum, by saying they'll be haunted by the ghost of their fetus, uh, by uh, shoving rosaries at them, uh, throwing holy water at them, uh, and at times even by grabbing them or, or closing the gate on them to stop them from coming inside. Uh, apart from the last bit, grabbing and closing the gate on them, all that you have described is lawful. It is, and, and that's the, the issue, is that uh, when we call the police, they're, they're quite frustrated that there's very little they can do under current laws to, to protect women from going through that kind of horrific experience, through that emotional blackmail. And that's why we're uh, really pleased with the leadership that Ealing Council has shown in uh, bringing this proposal forward, taking the next step. It's a landmark thing uh, and, and it has implications for the whole country. And we're hoping that Parliament will take their cue and, and show leadership at a national level as well. What is wrong with trying to persuade a woman about to go into your clinic to have an abortion potentially, not to have one or to think further about it? Part of it's the information that they're given. Women are given leaflets by these, uh, they call themselves pavement counselors, that have completely false information in them that they'll develop cancer, that they'll develop uh, drug and alcohol habits, that they'll feel inadequate as a mother in the future. So the information they're receiving is wrong. The way in which it's being given to them is coercive. And we see it as they come through our doors. They're shaking, they're in tears, they're angry, as are their partners or their families who've come to support them. What do they say to you when they get inside? They tell us what they've experienced, that they've been called murderers, that uh, they've had their paths blocked, that they've felt judged and shamed. Um, and we see it happening not only on the way in, but on the way out as well which is how we know that this isn't about providing information or support. This is about making people feel ashamed, scared, and intimidated about accessing treatment that they've, in most cases, really thought long and hard about and come to a firm decision already. You have cameras outside, I assume? It focuses just on our property. We're not um, allowed to film beyond that because it's a public area, and we have some large hedges that block our view of most of this. A public space protection order is a step closer. Ealing Council going to decide tonight whether to launch a consultation on bringing one in. What impact do you think such an order would have on the Ealing Clinic if it were to be brought in? It would, it would be an incredible day, I think, for us to know that our patients were coming to the clinic free from that experience on the way in and on the way out. It would unfortunately create a bit of a postcode lottery where it's something that people can enjoy in Ealing, but it's still happening outside clinics across the country but it's an important first step and we certainly welcome it. Claire McCullough, hello, from the Good Council Network. Uh, you've been uh, going to the clinic and standing outside for several years, taking part in vigils. The last time we spoke to you on this programme, you denied all of the kind of claims that you've heard uh, this morning from uh, the nurse at the clinic today. Is he lying? Unfortunately, yes. Um, can I just say again? No, 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 just... just... Yes, he is. Yes, he's right. lying. How do you respond to that? John Hanson Rivetti. I think, uh, unfortunately, there's been a, a lot of denial about the impact this has on women. 
We've, we hear it from our own patients. We hear it from our neighbors who phone us and say that they can see people distressed outside the clinic. Uh, we've had uh, officers from the council for the past several weeks sitting in interviewing women. And not only have they heard it from the women, but they themselves have felt harassed and intimidated on the way in. Claire McCullough, you wouldn't know the impact on some of the patients because once they're inside, you don't see them. So you have no idea what effect you're having on these patients. I think when you stand outside an abortion centre for 20 years, and many of the women who stand there with us, by the way, are women who've had abortions. Many, many people who come to uh, vigils outside clinics the women are women who've been through uh, abortion centres, who have been past people like us themselves who didn't maybe agree with us at that point and now come to the vigils. So I think we have a very good idea of but what women may feel. Do you accept that however you're doing it, for some women and their partners, once they get inside the Mary Stokes clinic, they are upset, distressed, angry at you, not at their own decision to have a termination? I think abortion is something that upsets women a lot. I'm sure some women I'm, would I'm rather. Asking, I'm, I'm, accepting, I'm, I'm trying to answer. It can take a sentence to answer a question. No, no, I I, you're answering a different women, question. I accept that some women who are already extremely upset at a horrible decision they're feeling they have to take do not like our presence there. Yes, I accept that. OK. So what, why do you carry on there? Well, first of all, can I just correct again that we are affiliated to the anti-abortion movement in America? We're not. I did say that the last time we were on the show. Why do you carry uh, we on? We carry then? on because every year, many, many women seek our help and support outside the abortion centre. Last Friday, um, I spoke to several of my counsellors who, during the week, one of them at Ealing had spoken to a woman who'd been there three times didn't want to go ahead with the abortion but felt she had no alternatives. At that moment, one of these passers-by who see women being distressed saw this crying lady and grabbed her arm and rushed into the clinic with her because she could see that this woman was upset and presumed that we were upsetting her. On that occasion, a woman had approached us for help and support that she was not getting inside the abortion centre. That's why we're still there. Councillor Binderai, that's the explanation, the justification for why uh, the group is still there. What do you say? Well, <clears throat> over the past four, year, four months or so now, our officers have been investigating all these claims. Mm. Uh, they've been collecting evidence and what we've concluded is that the behaviour outside the clinic is unacceptable. There is harassment, there is intimidation of these women and I think basically we have a responsibility to stop that sort of behaviour. Why haven't you called the police? Um, we have, the police have been called on some occasions and we have constant policing outside the clinic. Um, I know that every Saturday that I've been there, the police are there in force, but it's very difficult for the police because the current legislation is really restricting because in terms of harassment, you've got to prove that this is continuous harassment to one individual. And many of the women that come and visit the clinic will only come once or twice. So it's really difficult to make harassment stand up legally. I'm going to uh, appeal to our audience. Uh, we have been trying to talk to women um, who have been going to the clinic. Understandably, it's a very sensitive um, situation. But if there's anybody watching right now uh, who has used the clinic, who has walked past the, the, the group uh, holding the vigils, uh, do send me an email now or a message. And you can, obviously, you can do that anonymously and, and uh, tell us your own experiences. Um, what would be the effect of this kind of protection order if the council takes the decision to hold a consultation on it, which is a step closer to the order? Yes, um, the effect would be that we would have a certain area um, that would not allow any protesters to protest outside that area. So women would be able to access the clinic without anybody obstructing their journey to the clinic. Right. And of course, we mustn't forget that that would also make life a lot easier for people living in that street, for people using the um, facilities in that area, the park, the um, theatre down the well, road. What, what, what impact is it having on residents? Well, do you uh, residents are having to see this and hear this every single day. Hear what? Um, the, the prayers. Uh, they're having to look at the graphic images that are on display. We have no graphic they images. Are, well, I was there on Saturday and I saw some of those graphic images. When she talks about graphic images, she means pictures of the developing well, baby. You can talk to each other. You're sitting next to each other. You mean pictures of the developing yes, baby, not and, abortion and pictures? I think it's in, I there's think nothing it's graphic in, about it, I think it's inappropriate for very young children to see those sort of images. To see pictures because, of a developing baby in the womb? Because parents then have to choose to discuss. Uh, parents don't have a choice in whether they're discussing those issues with their children. What issues? Developing babies in the womb? 
children see these kind of there images all the time. There are lots of parents that would not want children to have that discussion. See, what discussion? There's no. nothing on the images that a mentions lot of, abortion. A lot of parents have told me they've had to have discussions with their children about abortion and that is a, a, a topic that they should be able to choose as and when they discuss that with their children, not when they're There's forced to. There's nothing in those images. There is also a school nearby discussion. and um, people will use a different route to get to the school. They'll use a different route to get to the park. And I don't think people should be restricted in that way because a group of people decide they want to protest. That's the pro vigil, uh, that's the vigil holders and the pro-choice group. I think that area needs to be brought back to normality. If this order is ultimately brought in, that would be unprecedented. It would. Uh, particularly in terms of protecting uh, an abortion clinic, if protecting is the right word. But it would only be in place for three years. It only lasts for three years, is yes. my understanding. Yes, that is, that is the difficulty with the PSPO, but we feel um, that once we've consulted and if residents agree, it would be the, the best fit for a solution for Ealing. However, we do need a national solution. And I know that myself and Julian Bell have given evidence to the Home Affairs Select Committee where we have very clearly said a national solution. We need national legislation. Otherwise, women across the country aren't going to be protected. And you're going to end up with a postcode lottery, as John stated earlier. And we are now showing our audience uh, images of, of um, some of the vigils outside and some of the images that are held up on placards. And I would love to read some messages from our audience, but again, my tablet has decided to freeze on me, so I apologise for that. Um, John, the work that you do at the clinic, tell us about the significance of it. It's, it's different for every woman who comes through. Uh, we have uh, a lot of patients who simply feel they cannot continue with the pregnancy for whatever reason, um, that it would be detrimental to their lives. And in fact, the only way that abortion is legal in this country is if two doctors certify that continuing the pregnancy would in fact have a detrimental effect to that woman's mental or physical health. We have other women who come to us because it was actually a wanted pregnancy uh, but a fatal fetal, fetal abnormality has been discovered and they have to terminate. And it's, it's these sorts of circumstances that nobody knows about when a woman is approaching our clinic and yet they're all approached in the same way, every single one of them, uh, and being told that they'll be punished for their decision. Uh, That's by, not true. It's what, they've, what they tell us when they're in the door. It's not true, and even if you look through the Mary Stopes log, there is one or two claims of that. Many of the claims that are actually in the Mary Stopes log, and these are the best hand-picked ones to submit as evidence, actually refer to the presence of sister supporter around the gate. In many instances, the actual complaints of women standing away from the clinic and phoning the clinic because they're afraid of the protest at the door refer to times when sister supporter are right across the doorway, which has been encouraged by it's both Binder group. and John, a, a group protesting our vigil, a pro-choice yeah. group who aims to stop women getting our leaflets so they can't actually have any other choices. Which is why we'd be very happy for a public space protection order that bans all protests. This isn't yes. about one group. There are five different anti-abortion groups. We don't care which one's outside. We don't care if it's Sister Supporter who's outside. We want that area free so that women can walk in without having to walk past a crowd, without having to walk past one person. Victoria, we've carried out, uh, we've had discussions with both groups, Sister Supporter Group and the Pro Vigil Groups. And we have come, we have tried to get an agreement. We've tried to get them to agree not to do what they're doing at the moment. But we've come to a deadlock, so There's we have no, no choice. for us to so stop we any have, specific behaviour. You have categorically stated, Claire, that you will continue to do what you do and operate in the way that you do. We have you had have no discussion with the council about stopping any particular behaviours. You have never put to us particular behaviours and asked us to stop those particular behaviours. Behaviours have been discussed with us, but we've never been told, well, if you would stop doing this or if you would stop doing that, the vigil would continue. That you've has also, never You've also happened. told the Home Affairs Select Committee that you wouldn't change your behaviour. And I think it would be fair to say that Claire is in denial. We have witnessed this behaviour. We've been told it's going to continue no matter what. When we're so we have no choice but to uh, look at the report that's come to committee tonight and consider consulting with residents, all stakeholders, including Claire's group and every other group, to see if a PSPO is the right way forward. When John is saying that we're blocking the gates and shutting the gates on women, why are they not bringing forward CCTV images of this? This is exactly where their CCTV camera is, on the path, on the gate, on the doorway, where they're saying that's the only bit they can film. Not a single image of us doing this has emerged. Okay. Why? Because it doesn't happen. Messages. I'll read some messages, then I want to ask you about 
the significance of your work in your view and then I'm going to talk to a woman who has used the clinic. Uh, Trevor tweets this, the anti-abortion terrorists their words, who protest outside abortion clinics should be banned from protesting within 500 metres of the gates of a clinic. They have no right to push their own religious and moral views on others, seeking lawful medical treatment. Tweet from Ariadne, what's wrong with asking a woman who is having an abortion not to have an abortion? Well, it's not your body for starters. Morgana on Facebook, regarding the anti-abortion protest, I think it's disgusting that the protesters put these women through such guilt before getting an abortion. They have no idea what their personal situation is. Perhaps they can't support the child or a pregnancy would endanger the woman. Plus, take a look at the recent story of the children being imprisoned and shackled. Not everyone can or should be a mother and they have no right to judge. A tweet from Marissa, I was advised to abort my child at 20 weeks because my waters had gone. My daughter is now three and was born at 28 weeks, one pound and 12 ounces. Uh, Graham, why give airtime to, fundamental, to fundamentalists to spread their hate speech against women making an informed choice? Uh, it's revolting. I'm going to talk to uh, one woman uh, who actually didn't use the Ealing Clinic, used a different abortion clinic. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you very much for talking to us. I'm going to call you Isabel. I know that's not your real name, but thank you for talking to us, Isabel. Uh, tell us about your own experience of, of entering an abortion clinic. Yeah, so I actually had to um, go to the clinic twice, um, sort of turned away the first time due to, um, you know, having to, to wait too long. So I um, suffered the uh, abuse kind of twice, um, and it was just torturous, really. I mean, we're lucky enough to have this choice um, and be free to have this choice in the UK, um, and you should just be able to go and, you know, do, do what you feel is right at the time. And these people that um, are standing outside have no idea of who you are, where you come from, what your scenario is, and how you've got into the situation. And what abuse was it that you suffered, Isabel, if I might ask, bearing in mind that um, it's date, a daytime audience? Of course. I'm just being called a murderer, um, far the quite graphic images being um, pushed in, into your face. Um, and, you know, mentioned around um, God and things, which, again, you know, we've in this country, we can all have a choice and a free, free right to decide what we believe and what we don't believe in. What impact did it have on you? Um, it just made a very stressful time, you know, even, even more stressful, which, you know, I don't know whether these people understand that it's still difficult for, to make a decision like that. So, you know, the people in the, in the clinics are specialised and trained um, to provide that support and, you know, that's very much welcomed, but you don't kind of need harassing when you're going about your, you know, your decision. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you for coming on Thank the programme. I appreciate it. Lisa tweets this, if I wanted counselling, I wouldn't go and see someone on a street corner. Uh, Linda tweets this, people, uh, if they want an abortion, people, if they want an abortion, should be able to do so peacefully and without intimidation. I really think people going in without knowing the details. Uh, they do not need self-opinionated people outside giving crass info. Concentrate on your own lives. And Joanna says, even if you are anti-abortion, you have no right to harass already distressed and vulnerable women. Um, and so it goes on. So the decision tonight, what are you expecting? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you must because have a there will be a debate, but I hope that Cabinet will approve the consultation and we go ahead with the next stage because it's really important for us to protect women who are trying to access legally available health care without intimidation and harassment. And briefly Claire, uh, the significance of your work is what? Well we've seen hundreds of women over the years, we've seen over a thousand women in London choose life for their children by being offered help or just having a supportive person outside who felt that they had no alternatives. Over half of those women come from Ealing, the Ealing Centre and I think if this is put in place, it's an attempt by the clinic to keep their um, profits high and very little care for women. We, just okay. look at NHS you, you Choices. Must that. Hang on. NHS please, Choices please rep um, reviews of Mary Stokes Clinic online. I'd ask you to have a look at the way women are treated in that clinic and what choices they have. Well, we have a nurse and manager from the Mary Stokes Clinic. Would you like to respond to that point about lack of care for women and profits? So obviously that's untrue. Um, all of the nurses that work at the clinic, uh, they joined this line of work to support women. Um, I think that's easy to understand. 
Um, we've heard multiple accusations that our, our numbers have gone down because of Good Counsel's uh, presence outside the clinic. And actually, they've gone to other clinics. So our, the total numbers across the UK haven't changed. And all the, the only impact this is having is delaying treatment. Someone approaches the clinic, they see a crowd, they don't want to have to walk past it, so they rebook. It's not actually and true, abortion figures what, are dropping across the country. What that means for them is that they're having to achieve treatment at a later gestation, uh, and it's always safer to be treated earlier, and you have more options when you're treated earlier. Okay. So they're being robbed of their choice and their safety by these actions. These women Thank are you. being Thank helped, and we are seeing them and their babies, so they're not going elsewhere. Thank you Certainly all. all of them are Thank not. Thank you. We'll report back on the programme, of course, tomorrow after the decision tonight. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you.